In this video, we will be answering the question on the screen from the 2022 Ordinary Level Maths Exam, Paper 1. If you are looking for any other questions from this paper, there will be a link in the description to a playlist that will have them all. This is question one and it's all about complex numbers, which are a number made up of both a real part and an imaginary part. Part A1 starts us off by, well basically they give us the argon diagram first and it has a number already on it, a dot, and that's a Z1. And A part one asks us to write down the number for Z1. Now all that means is Z1 a complex number looks like this, uh, plus an i. And it looks like a number plus another number in front of an i. So in this case, what is this number? So if we look at the real part first, the real part, this dot is underneath the minus two. So minus two. If we look at the imaginary part, the imaginary line, the dots across from minus one, minus three. That would give you full marks, but we, we wouldn't usually write it like that. We'd neaten that up and write minus two plus times a minus is a minus three i. So that's uh, your answer to a part one. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a second part. The second part asks us a z1 um, conjugate, the line above, that's a conjugate. Conjugates are useful in algebra and in complex numbers specifically um, for dividing and stuff. I'm sure it has lots of uses in mathematics. Doesn't really matter, you, you just need to learn how to do it. It comes up every year. They're gonna ask you a question like this. So the conjugate of this number here, we can just write it down, there's nothing to do, is just change the sign of the imaginary part. Once you get to the, once you get to a simplified complex number, it's very easy to change into a conjugate. Okay, so that's A part one, A part two, uh, I believe, yeah, just just label plot and label Z1 conjugate on the graph. So here's Z1, and Z1 conjugate is minus 2, here's minus 2, plus 3i, plus 3 is here. So they meet at this point. Um, that's half your marks, you still need to label it, so remember to put Z1 conjugate. You will lose marks for that, because they did specifically say to label the diagram. A little, it's not asking this, a little extra uh, marks. The conjugate is always the mirror image if this real line was the mirror. So this is, it's like um, if you fold it over to there. No matter where you have a point, if the point was here, fold it down, the conjugate would be down there. That's, it's not important for this question. Okay, on to part B. In part B they give us two new numbers, Z2 is equal to minus uh, five plus three i and z three, which is equal to four plus uh, four minus two i. Yeah, four minus two i. And uh, quite simply, they ask us to put that on the diagram. Now we've already put this on the diagram the same way. Minus five plus three i. We go to minus five. We go to plus three, and they meet. Uh, in your exam, I would advise to use a little dotted line like that. Uh, use a ruler, though, of course. Uh, I'm just doing it quickly for an example. And we label all these, Z2, does it tell us specifically to label? Yeah, plot and label. Okay, Z3 is four minus two i, we go to plus four, and minus two, we go Z3, it's, yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, that's uh, part B, part C then. It asks us to find Z2 minus Z3. Okay, it's very common problem students have with this sort of question. Um, they don't know what to do uh, here. It's sometimes it's X plus Y and they don't know what to do. Always look around your question. Do you know what Z2 is? If yes, like Z2 equals, you know what it is, just write the question again, but instead of Z2, put the numbers you know. And when it's an X, it's the numbers often just seven. Um, but in complex, it looks a bit weirder. So let's just write this again, but instead of Z2, we write minus five plus three I. Whenever I'm substituting something in, I like to put a bracket around it. It often helps. In this case, it won't, but the next part it will. 
So Z2, I write Z2. Minus, I write minus. Z3, I'm going to write Z3. 4 minus 2i. Okay, we're going to clean this up. Uh, let's do it up here. Um, there's nothing outside this bracket. So we can just ignore it. There's nothing multiplying in. So that's, uh, we'll put an equals here. Well, let's, let's put it down here. Uh, minus 5 plus 3i. Now there is something else in this bracket. Minus, acting on a 4, is minus 4. Minus on a minus 2i is plus 2i. We can clean this up, all the real numbers, minus 5 and minus 2, they can go together to minus 9. All the imaginary numbers, 3i and 2i, they add together to get 5i. And that's it. Um, something else a lot of students that get confused by is they say in the form of a plus bi. This is in the form of a plus bi. What that means is a number and another number. So for example, this line here, this line here is, is also correct, but it's not in the form of a plus bi. It's a and a b and a c and a d. It's not as neat as it could be. So that's what they mean by a. A lot of students get confused, just ignore it, I would say. Oh, there's one last part to part c. Um, once we have z2 minus z3, which is this, they now want Z2 minus Z3 modulus. Well, that's the same as, uh, let me write here, equals to the modulus of minus nine plus five I. So again, if they want, they ask you this question, well, you know what Z2 minus Z3 is. It's minus nine plus five I. So let's get the modulus of this. Now, um, for modulus, it's going to come up every year. So just learn it, uh, go to that page in your book, do about 10 examples of it. It's as simple as that. Learn how to do the modulus of two numbers. In this case, it's going to be, I'll put an equals here. It's going to be this number, minus nine squared, plus, well, sorry, not this plus, this plus is unrelated, plus whatever number's here, plus five, we'll put a plus five here, squared, and it's the square root of all of that. <coughs> and minus nine squared, do it on a calculator if you're not comfortable is 81, 5 squared is 25, add these together we get square root of 106. You could try to make this smaller, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to, so that's the smallest it goes, uh, square root of 106. <clears throat> oh, as a little extra, this modulus, like I said, you should just learn off how to do it really. Um, if you do get interested in what it means, what it, what it does, it just means it's the distance of a point to the center. So the distance of this point, minus 9 plus 5, which is minus 9 is somewhere here, plus 5, somewhere up over this area. The distance from that to the center is the square root of 106. Put that on your calculator, it's about 10 point something 10.2 or something which looks about right nine up five over that looks like a distance of about 10 and that's what it is if we got the modulus of z3 it'd be this distance modulus of z1 is the distance to this center and so on okay on to part d the final part in question one they we keep a z3 here z3 is equal to four minus two i and they ask us to investigate if this z is a solution to this equation. z squared plus 2iz minus uh, 7i. Now all that means, and they'll ask the same question in, in normal algebra, with, they might just say x is equal to four, investigate if that is a solution to this equation with x squared or something like that. And it's the same answer to this. They're asking you to investigate if something solves an equation. Instead of z, we're just going to put this number in. So everywhere you see a z, we're going to put in this number. As z squared, this number squared. Plus is a plus. A 2i is a 2i. Instead of the z, we're going to put in 4 minus 2i. 
minus minus 7i is still a minus 7i equals is an equals zero is a zero so we're going to put this in and investigate by if if the answer comes out zero equals zero then it is it is a solution if the answer comes out seven equals zero well it's not a solution oh well sorry this is complex numbers so the answer might come out two plus two i equals zero well no it's not only zero plus zero i is equal to zero. So let's investigate that. We'll do all this out. Um, it's question one, so I'll go a little slowly here. To square a number, it's two minus, four minus two i multiplied by four minus two i. It's just the number by itself. Um, plus, uh, we'll multiply this out, two i times four is eight i. Two i plus two i by minus two i, plus by a plus is a minus. 2 by a 2 is a 4, i by i is i squared, minus 7i equals 0. Let's multiply this one out. Uh, we get everything by itself, 4 by 4, 4 by minus 2, minus 2 by 4, minus 2 by minus 2. Um, multiply all them out, we don't get 4. <laughs> 4 by 4 we get 16. And minus 2 by 4, minus 8i, uh, 4 by minus 2, minus 8i minus 2 by minus 2, plus 4i squared, plus 8i, minus 4i squared, minus 7i equals 0. We can clean a lot of this up. First thing we can do is i squares, they equal uh, minus 1. I think they tell you that in the question, maybe somewhere up at part A or B. i squared is equal to minus 1. It's something we always learn in complex numbers. So we can clean all this up, uh, we get, well let's write it all out again. I don't think I'd do this in uh, my own question, but still, i squared is minus one, four multiplied by minus one is minus four, plus eight i, minus four by minus one is plus four, minus seven i equals zero. Let's just put them all together. We've simplified everything down into reals and imaginaries. All the real numbers, put this in a calculator if you don't have to in your head. 16 minus four plus four, that'll equal uh, 16. Oh yeah, four, four minus four disappears. Um, put all the i's in a calculator, well, leave the i out. Minus eight, minus eight, plus eight, minus seven. Uh, the two eights will cancel, we'll get minus 15. Again, you don't have to do this in your head. Do it slowly. Do it at the side of a page. Um, do it on a calculator. Um, 16 minus 15. Oh, we already had equal zero. Well, no, that's not correct. And that's how I finished the question. I would write something in English. I would say, um, no, not a solution. Something like, how do I spell solution? I don't know. I'm a maths teacher. I don't know how to spell. Um, and does this make sense? No, not. I'm not sure. So they want to see the word no somewhere. They want you to see you say this is not a solution. And so don't forget to do that. Always throw a little English in at the end of your question. Even if you don't get it right, try and explain what you think it should be in a bit of English. It um, doesn't have to be good English. doesn't have to be good spelling. But you will get extra marks for it. Okay, I hope uh, that helped you out. If you're looking for solutions to any other questions, have a look at my channel. So I have I have a good few there. I don't have all of them though, so good luck with that. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.